Okay, let's get started. Hi, everybody who is logged on is uh, ready to go, I hope. Uh, welcome, I'm Tricia Brown. I am the North American Liaison for Bocconi University of Italy. I'm based in New York City, and I work with a team in Milan, as well as with a colleague in Shanghai, China. Together, we speak to students all around the world who are interested in the Bocconi opportunity and want to learn more about it. So thank you for signing up for tonight. You are among the people who want to learn more about Bocconi, so I'm happy to welcome you. Um, so let's get started. Let me go through the agenda. Okay, so tonight I'm going to talk to you about why pursue a bachelor's degree in Italy, uh, tell you a bit about an overview and introduction to the university, explain our undergraduate programs, uh, explain to you what our campus life is about in our urban campus in Milan, go over admissions, financial aid, and housing procedures, and then leave time at the end for a Q&A, okay? All right, so why Italy and why Bocconi? Those are the big questions to start with today. All right, so um, most of you probably have a friend or a family member or you've heard about somebody who has studied abroad for a semester when they're in college. Um, I wish we were in a big classroom right now. I would ask you to raise your hand if, if that was true for you. Um, but so those, those friends or classmates may have gone abroad for a semester, probably in their junior year. And when they came back from Europe, they said, oh my gosh, it was amazing. And there were so many cool things to see and do. And I learned so much and I learned another language maybe. And they learned a lot about the culture and they got to travel and they had great experiences. So what I'd like to talk to you tonight is about taking that concept and taking it to the next level. And the next level would be doing your full college um, undergraduate experience in Italy instead of just for a semester. And um, I, that's why I'm here to talk to you about Bocconi. And we are based in Milan, Italy. So everybody has a certain image when it comes to Italy, very romantic notion of uh, beautiful art and architecture. And um, so Milan is a place where you can experience all that and more. It is really the hub to Europe, not just in terms of the labor market, but hub in terms of travel opportunities. It's situated in the north of Italy. So within a few hours, you can get to lots of other European countries uh, just very easily by train. It is a it is the engine of the Italian economy. So that means that it's the hub for uh, finance for one. Uh, the Italian stock market is there. There are a lot of financial companies that are there. Um, and many headquarters of multinational companies are based in Milan. And in addition, it's not just a hub for finance, but also for the things that Italy is known for all around the world. So uh, fashion, design, art, culture. So these are the things that are really synonymous with Italy. And those are things that are all, um, those are, there's the kinds of companies and the kinds of um, uh, identities that are really synonymous with Italy. And they're happening in Milan. So we have a city that has eight universities, 200,000 students in Milan. So in addition to the students that you would meet on the Bocconi campus, you would have all of these other college campuses. So it's a very young and vibrant city, and you have that experience on campus, you have that experience throughout the city as well. And it's a city that's really known for its cultural diversity as well. So, you know, I'm sure you've seen pictures or movies with cafe culture in Italy and all the romantic ideas of traveling and hanging out in Italy and a big cathedral in a big square where people are sunning themselves and hanging out. So all of that is happening in Milan. Um, so uh, I want to tell you a little bit about that to start. Then I'm going to move in and tell you about Bocconi. So uh, we were founded in 1902. We're a private university, a research university, and we were the first in Italy to grant a degree in economics. And so we started as a very Italian university, and in 1974, Bocconi decided to start internationalizing. So it formed an exchange partnership with NYU, the Stern School of Business in New York, and since then, that exchange network has grown to many hundreds of partners, and I'll get into that in a little bit. We offered our first bachelor's program taught solely in English in 2001, and since then, we've started to offer quite a few more, and I will talk a lot more about that later. Um, so that uh, that's, a, that's just to give you kind of like a, a first look at Bocconi. 
Now, in terms of our rankings, as you can see, uh, we have um, very strong rankings that really demonstrate the important place that Italy holds in the world in terms of business, economics, um, and the strength of those areas in particular. We're consistently ranked among the top five in Europe and among the top 10 to 20 in the world, uh, which really demonstrates our core strengths. We have 14,700 students. Uh, just under half of those are international students. And while you're walking around our campus, you hear Italian spoken, of course. You hear a ton of English spoken. And then you hear loads of other languages spoken. And that's because we have 100 um, nationalities on campus. So there's a very multicultural, very international aspect of our campus life that students notice immediately. So you have this experience of being and living in Italy. You have this experience of living in Europe. And then you have this experience of um, this very international environment. And for students who want to go to school in Italy or in Europe because they want to learn international business skills, learn a second language, uh, build their multicultural skills, build a European network, these are all pe reasons why people come to Bocconi from abroad. And these are all things that, uh, all goals that you can realize at Bocconi. So um, in addition to the students on campus, there are 4,000 students who are, um, coming into the campus from study abroad and going out for international opportunities. And I'll talk about those a little bit more in a moment. So in terms of research uh, at our institution, you have firsthand access to people who are really creating and sharing knowledge um, firsthand on the front lines. Um, you, so you have access to those professors and that's not just in economics and finance, but also management, marketing and other fields. Um, the faculty are another way that we're very international. Our faculty, the Italian faculty, have often gotten their PhDs abroad at, at universities around the world. And we also have international faculty who are at Bocconi full time, as well as adjunct faculty. So you can see that the international dimension um, and this characteristic that I keep mentioning is really part of lots of different aspects of Bocconi life. Um, earlier I said that we have an exchange network to start with, with NYU. Now we have 281 partners around the world. Uh, they are schools where students can go spend a semester on exchange. Um, about 4,000 students go abroad every year about 2,300 go for a semester abroad and 1,700 do an internship abroad. And so if you're doing a semester abroad, you would do that in your final year and you would go to one of our partner schools and the partner schools were really chosen um, for their academic excellence and for their reputations in Bocconi's core areas of strength. So you're gonna find that it's very important to us that you have a very strong academic experience while you're with us, but then we also want that experience to be matched at one of our partner schools um, worldwide. So depending on where in the world you wanna go, you're probably gonna find a partner. As you can see, we're all over. If you're an American student and you're studying at Bocconi uh, for your bachelor's, but now you're homesick uh, for the US, you can come and study at one of the partner schools that we have in the US, such as Cornell, uh, Columbia, Carnegie Mellon, Dartmouth, Michigan, University of Chicago, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. As you can see, there's 68 in North America alone. Um, so we really look at the top ranked business and economics programs around the world and that's how those partnerships were formed early on so that there was like a symmetry between what we offer at Bocconi and what our partner schools offer. Another key part of your college experience um, beyond your academics, of course, is um, the relationships with the business community and career service opportunities. So our graduates, as you can see, um, they, we have 700 employee um, recruiting events, on, employer recruiting events on campus every year. We have thousands and thousands of internship offers. Um, a chunk of those are abroad and the rest are in Italy. And we have, 120,000 alumni in our network. And that includes a number of chapters in the US. We have um, chapters in New York, which is our biggest alumni chapter, as well as uh, Washington DC, Boston, Chicago, uh, Dallas, Miami, San Francisco, LA, and Seattle. And uh, so if you're in a major city in the US after you um, 
after you leave Bocconi, you're gonna be close to an alumni network. And of course, we're all digitally connected anyway, so even if you're in Atlanta, like our colleagues at NSHSS, you, um, you obviously can connect with an alumni network from anywhere. Um, so this gives you an idea of the kind of recruiting events you can expect at Bocconi. Uh, we have twice a year job fairs on campus, then we have others that we hold in various centers around Europe and as well as in Shanghai, China. Uh, people are always asking how our high rankings and our strong reputation and these extensive relationships with the business community translate into um, our employment rate. It's very high. We're very proud of the fact that 96, uh, just under 96% of our graduates are employed a year after graduation. Uh, that's something that really speaks to the value of Bocconi's business relationships and the quality of our graduates. Employers know what they're getting and they um, those students are quick to find um, jobs using the networks that they build on the Bocconi campus. To give you an idea of the kind of companies that regularly recruit on campus, here is a list, uh, just to give you some sense of it. Okay. And let me move on to talk about the specifics about the undergraduate program. Okay, so um, I mentioned the overall number for the university earlier, and of that population, 7,900 uh, of those students are undergraduate students in our bachelor's program. 41% of them are in uh, programs taught in English. They're international students in programs taught in English. In addition to that, there are Bocconi Italian students who are in programs taught in English as well. Um, so the English uh, classes occupy a large space uh, of the academic offerings. You can see from this map, just a general distribution of where our students come from, 50%, uh, a little more than 50% from Europe and the rest from around the world. These are our main areas of study. Um, finance, management, and economics are our core areas since the beginning. And over the last decade or more, we've really been building up our expertise um, and our reputation in uh, political science and data science and mathematics for artificial intelligence. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about the specifics of our programs in a moment. Uh, just to give you a sense of the structure, Bocconi is structured uh, a bit different than what you may be used to if you're looking at US colleges. So Bocconi follows a European model which is more typically a three-year bachelor program. And the reason that we can be, uh, it's still fully accredited um, and, it, uh, and it would be the equivalent education to a four-year bachelor's in the US because what we do is you enter and you immediately start diving into the, your key areas. Um, you're gaining foundational knowledge in the core areas and then you're expanding from there. So you come in the first year and you're, st you're studying the fundamentals um, and foundational subjects like micro and macroeconomics, various mathematics classes, things of that nature. You're also starting with your first foreign language. Um, students are required to take Italian. If you already speak Italian, you are allowed to um, take something else. Um, but everybody pretty much takes starts with Italian. You're also layering into some other uh, skill building classes and opportunities like public speaking, teamwork, critical thinking, there's some IT classes. So all of that is your early education. Um, then by the second year, you're doing a deeper dive into your focus area, maybe it's management, maybe it's economics, um, and you're drilling down from there, taking deeper level classes, you're doing more with public speaking, et cetera, and you're adding a second foreign language, maybe French, German, Spanish, et cetera. And then the third year, you're taking your elective classes, um, you're studying abroad or you're doing an internship. Um, uh, like I said, the study abroad is optional um, and the internship could be in Italy, it could be in Europe, it could be back at home. Uh, and you're doing that, you're doing various workshop classes and then you're also writing a thesis. So let me tell you a little bit about um, the programs that we offer. So as you can see, um, these seven that we offer in English are the ones I'm gonna be speaking about tonight. Um, 
they are all very interdisciplinary. And as you can see, the word international appears in, in most of them. And that is another way that you know that Bocconi's focus um, on internationalization and international skill building is very much integrated into our academic offerings. It's a very core part of the school's mission. So you're gonna get a very international global perspective and skill building in one of these areas. And um, actually I shouldn't say one of these areas because like I said, they're interdisciplinary. So you're gonna study economics and management or economics and finance um, or economics management and computer sciences, for example. So as I mentioned, you're just gonna come right in the beginning, you're, gonna, you're going to dive into these areas and then you're gonna have the chance very quickly to deepen your knowledge in these subject areas. I'm just gonna spotlight a few that I think are pretty particularly unique to Bocconi. Uh, one is our um, economics and management for arts, culture, and communication. So that is a really amazing program uh, for students who want to learn more about creative industries like fashion or design, or they want to learn about museums on, and other cultural institutions, or they're interested in publishing or music or uh, creative fields like that. So that's a way to get a business education around these creative industries. And it really is able to leverage the um, our position in Milan and the relationship with the business community and the connections that a student can make being in Italy, let's say learning about fashion management, uh, which is a very popular, uh, very popular reason to come. Uh, another one, which is our newest program is mathematics and computing for artificial intelligence. Um, and that's really the integration of math, economics, computer science, and physics. Um, it's a very unique program. There's, it's, uh, it's, there's, you're not gonna really find a match of a program like that um, in terms of the way it's set up. And I invite you to come to our website because um, when you click on apply at the top and then you click on the bachelor's programs, bachelor of science programs, you'll see the list of all these programs along the left and you can click on each one and get a, a deeper dive into the program structure, what they offer, what kind of classes, how it's laid out. And then from there you can navigate and see the kinds of classes that we offer overall, which which would give you a sense of the kind of electives that are open to you as well. Uh, the last one I'm gonna speak about specifically, but I invite you to check out all of the ones that interest you, um, is the World Bitch Bachelor in Business. It's a four-year joint program that we offer with uh, USC, University of Southern California, and the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. That is uh, the only one of our bachelors that's a four-year program. You actually get three degrees. You start out uh, the first year at USC, then the second year you go to Hong Kong, to HKUST, year three you're at Bocconi in Milan, and then year four you get to choose where you like the best and you finish out there. You get three degrees. It's a very selective class. If it's about 50 students, they are jointly chosen by the three universities. It's a different timeline and a different admissions process, uh, different admissions criteria than our regular admissions, but you are able to apply to both um, a three-year program and the World Bachelor in Business at the same time um, and see uh, if that's your first choice. If the WBB is your first choice and you don't get it, then you still have the other choices. So that's another thing I invite you to check out if that appeals to you. Um, for students who really want the deepest possible dive into a multicultural um, education and a global education, um, I, I highly recommend you read more about it. Okay, so let me talk to you a little bit about our teaching methods. Um, so in, we have a very strong uh, technology uh, infrastructure on, on the campus, uh, even more so now because of the pandemic and the online teaching that had to happen. Um, so students are coming in the first year, more, uh, more of the classes will be larger lecture-based classes in format. And then as you go through the second and third year, they're gonna move into much more um, interactive smaller class sizes, more interactive. Uh, there'll be a focus on case studies. There'll be a focus on guest speakers in the classroom. There'll be focus on behavioral skills seminars. Uh, there'll be a focus on group work. So all the things that you would expect from a, a business-oriented education program, you're going to find. Uh, very strong interaction between students and teachers. Uh, faculty are available during office hours or before and after class. They also have teaching assistants available to you. So uh, you get plenty of support from the faculty. Um, okay. 
Moving on in the interest of time, uh, let me talk a bit about campus life. So we do have an urban campus um, in, in, in Milan, as I mentioned. So that means that you get the best of life on campus, all of the events that are happening there. Sometimes that means a film festival. Sometimes that means uh, during fashion week, we're having a fashion show on campus. Sometimes it means uh, one of the pictures here is um, Howard Schultz, of the, the head of Starbucks. When Starbucks opened their first store in Italy, they had to really adapt their business plan because what they found was Italian coffee culture and the American coffee culture are not at all the same culture. Italians approach coffee very differently. And um, so the Starbucks model that works all over the US was not gonna work in Italy. So Howard Schultz came to campus and he really took our students through um, understanding what that business approach was um, and, and how Starbucks had to change cross-culturally to be able to adapt to the Italian market. So that's one example. Um, but being in a city, of course, you can go to the world famous La Scala Opera House. You can go to shows, you can go to sporting events, you can go to concerts. I mean, there's loads of things happening and they're right outside those things are just right outside the door. Um, Milan is a city that is full of nightlife and cafes, loads and loads of restaurants. Um, it's a very safe city, which I know parents always care about. I'm a parent, I care about that. So it's a very safe city. Um, and the campus is, is right in the city. And then in about, um, about a 20, 25 minute walk, you can get to the Duomo, which is the main cathedral. You can get there faster if you jump on the tram. Um, and, but so that's like the center of the city. And so we're right in the city, like surrounded by tons of little boutiques and shops and cafes and all the things you imagine uh, when you imagine Italy. And then on the campus itself, we have all the amenities you would expect from a campus, uh, all the classrooms, the library, the bookstore, the IT centers. Um, we also have a number of cafeterias. We have dorms, which I'll speak about in a moment. We have various health services and um, a TV and radio station that students work at. Uh, we have 80 student associations, which is what we call our student clubs. So pretty much anything that you're interested in doing, I can assure you, <laughs> uh, there's a very good chance you're going to find that on campus. Uh, so that is just like a kind of a brief overview of what you're going to find. There's loads of student events happening all the time, very active, vibrant campus. So if you don't want to be just in the city with the other 200,000 college students in Milan, you have plenty to do on campus and vice versa. Our newest building on campus, uh, part of our campus expansion, is a beautiful new building that houses a 300 room dorm, uh, Sta Bocconi, which is our MBA program, our graduate business program. And then it also has a um, super fancy new rec center, sports center, which has a volleyball court, a basketball court, a pool, and a, and a health club. So that's also available to students. I get a lot of questions, of course, about how we've adapted uh, due to COVID. So right now we are using a blended model. Um, in February, when Milan was really the epicenter for the virus, uh, the campus shut down and everything moved immediately and very seamlessly online. And that was because we had great technology in place already and faculty were used to using that technology. And since that time, we've really only enhanced our investment um, in online technologies that allows our faculty to stream their classes live, to post things to Blackboard so that students have access to the content. So um, in the summer, uh, so all the students went home when Italy had to to be you know cleared out like every country like everywhere we were all at home and so during that time students were continuing their classes online then in the summer we sent a survey and students overwhelmingly responded that they wanted to be back on campus in the fall so we had our welcome days opening at the end of august um, now we have the vast majority of our students are back on campus the ones who are unable to travel because of the virus um, or maybe restrictions from their country because of visa regulations because of the virus, they are doing classes online. So everyone is guaranteed a seamless uh, class delivery regardless of what has happened and what will happen. Because of course we don't know what will happen, but the school is very well set up to manage what, what has already happened and what, what's coming. Uh, we Over the summer, we also really drilled down on our security and sanitization 
procedures. There's all sorts of new um, systems in place for that. If you're a person who gets turned on by videos of uh, things being sanitized and things being um, touchless entry, there's a, a video on our YouTube channel that really shows all the new ad adaptations on campus for that. Of course, our admissions office had to change as well because in the middle of a pandemic, you can't have the same exact deadline and you can't have the same exact requirements because everything um, was uh, just, we were all locked down, right? And there wasn't a lot we could do. So there was a lot of flexibility in terms of testing options, uh, amended deadlines, a lot of flexibility to allow students to be able to still apply to Bocconi and start this year um, so that we could give them as much students as much support as possible. Uh, when you're on campus, as you can see from my photo, people are wearing masks. Uh, I haven't been back to Milan since the pandemic started because I, I can't go back there right now, but my, my colleagues report to me that everybody's wearing a mask on campus around the city. It's, it's a very normal, um, safe approach to living that we've all adapted to. Okay, so let me get to uh, admissions procedures and financial aid and housing. Uh, some of the nitty gritty that I know people want to know about. So here's how we evaluate students. We look at your 10th and 11th grade GPAs. Uh, so the combined GPA from those two years. So your 12th grade, you of course you have to graduate high school. That is a requirement. We will ask you for a copy of your diploma at the end, but we are not going to look at those grades. When we accept you, it's an unconditional offer. So um, even if you get a C in something in your senior year, um, it's, uh, it's not reported in because you've already been accepted. Uh, so that's reassuring for students. For American students, uh, we have a requirement from the Ministry of Education that for schools in Italy, uh, a requirement of enrollment is that students must take three AP exams or two APs and a SAT subject test in a different subject. And so that means that you can apply before you've taken all your APs, like maybe it's your senior year and you're still taking two or you're taking three and you need that. You have until the end of the, of the school year um, to submit that information to us. So when you apply, you let us know what you're taking. And then after you're accepted, you upload the uh, PDF from the College Board that certifies that you got a three, four, or five on those AP classes. There's a long list of things that are approved. It's not just uh, statistics and economics. It's a wide range of subjects. There's a list on our website. Um, if you have any questions for that, you can always ask me. Um, we also require the SAT or the ACT. Um, but of course, we understand that those tests keep getting canceled. And um, so I know, you know, I know thousands and thousands of college students or high school students who have been waiting some since March to take the test and it keeps getting canceled in their area. Bocconi recognizes that we have something called the Bocconi test. We've offered it for many years, but it used to only be offered on campus. Now it's offered online as well. So that's another way we've pivoted due to the pandemic to make things more accessible. Um, like the others, it's a standardized test that has logic and math and reading comprehension questions. Uh, it's a timed, you know, short test like that. It's shorter than the other two. And because of COVID, we now offer it three times uh, this coming academic year and it, for a few days at a time. So uh, you can find information about that online and some sample questions. And most of the time students prepare for it just by the way they would prepare for the SAT, for example. And so we um, that's another option if you're in a place where you just can't seem to get a test because you can't get a seat or it just keeps getting canceled. Um, so keep that open, so no need to panic there. Uh, the other big thing we're looking at is your resume. So that is self-explanatory overview of your background and your accomplishments and experiences, and then your personal statement. So your personal statement helps because um, it's not like the um, essay you're writing for the Common App. Um, it's really a, it's a motivational statement. It talks about why Bocconi, why the school it would be a good fit for you, and why you're applying to a specific program and why that program would be a good fit for you, and then who you are beyond your grades and your test scores. Um, so your motivation, your skill, your future goals, um, all of that. And um, just to say, to go back to applying to a particular program, you are not applying to Bocconi to a general applicant pool. 
you're applying to a specific program. So a few slides ago, I told you about the seven programs in English. You would do your research before you apply, figure out the ones that appeal to you. You get up to four choices. You can apply to one, you can apply to four, and anything in between. You rank them in order, and your letter of motivation would say, I'm interested in this program because this is my background, this is what I'm trying to do, these are my goals for the future, I'm very good at this, and this is what's offered in the program, I'd like to build those skills. You know, you're really telling a story that complements your res resume. It's not just a summary of what's on your resume. And then students are admitted to that particular program. So you have to really be careful about your choices uh, so that you know that uh, you've done your homework before you get to that point. Uh, we always get the question of, do you accept different kinds of diplomas? As you can see here, we accept all kinds of diplomas. You can see it's really a mix. Our admissions office is used to reviewing applications from all around the world, so they have seen diplomas from everywhere. Um, and so you can see the breakdown here. You apply through a portal on the Bocconi website. You set up an account, and your application is applied through there, uh, set up through there. You are uploading scores and grades through there. You're checking results to see if you got admitted through there. Everything is happening um, in the Bocconi portal. Uh, the last thing I'll say on this slide is that it is possible to reapply if you are not accepted uh, the first time. And I'll get into that next. So we have three seasons for applications. Um, so the first session uh, actually ends uh, tomorrow at 12 noon Bocc uh, Bocconi time or Italy time. And so that's uh, 6 a.m. for New York and 3 a.m. for California. Um, so that deadline uh, is coming up. Uh, the next deadline is in uh, January 25th and the last one is in early April. So each application season, they're open for a few weeks at a time. You can apply anytime in that season and that's Session rather, and then um, a few months later, you get your results. You're checking them on the portal, as I mentioned, and then you have about three weeks to make a decision, uh, complete the enrollment paperwork, and pay a deposit um, of about 1,600 euros. So that's the cycle. Uh, your best chances for success are to apply earlier in the year, so either this session or the winter session. Uh, by the time we get to the spring session, there are still seats, but it's it's a much, much, much smaller number. So if you know that Pocconi is right for you, um, just keep that in mind. The early session now, um, that is really designed for students who have had Bocconi on their resume, on their radar for a long time. They know about it for lots of reasons. They've been watching it since they're a sophomore or junior, and they're ready to go at the beginning of senior year. Um, the, the, I know for people on this call who may be new to Bocconi, um, obviously <laughs> um, that, that deadline is not aligned with you. So you're going to, if you're a junior, you have a lot of time to research Bocconi. And if you're a senior, we have lots of opportunities for you to get the, to know the university. We have webinars. There are university uh, buddies who can tell you about different programs and, and lots of other things. And I'll give you a bunch of links at the end. Okay, so um, one thing that students and parents alike always appreciate is that Bocconi is a private university, but the tuition is comparable to a US uh, public institution. So it's um, 13,000 euros per year. Uh, which right now is a little more than $15,000 a year. Uh, students come in, uh, they are automatically evaluated for a uh, scholarship. There are two main kinds of scholarship uh, at the at, uh, enrollment period, uh, the Bocconi Merit Awards and the Bocconi International Awards. The Merit Awards allow students to have 100% tuition waiver, sometimes housing too, and students are evaluated on their academic merit. They don't fill out any extra applications, it's just part of the review process by our admissions team, and if you're an outstanding student, you'll be awarded a Merit Award. Then the next level is a 50% tuition uh, reduction, and those are called International Awards. There are hundreds and hundreds Hundreds of those awards that are given out. Uh, they are for also outstanding students, but only international students. Um, and the idea is that, like I keep saying, Bocconi is very, uh, our mission is very much on internationalization and welcoming a very diverse international class into the university. So that's a way to really support, that funding line is a way to support um, international students to come to Bocconi. Then um, if you 
are looking for need-based uh, tuition reduction. Um, that is a process that happens after you are accepted and after you are enrolled. You can complete paperwork that helps you to um, uh, submit your family's financial situation, and then that's reviewed for a potential uh, need-based aid award. All of these links, um, I know we have a profile on the NSHSS website, and all of these things that I'm mentioning are hyperlinked on that site, so you can get to the right page on our website that will tell you a lot more information. Um, another award uh, is a, um, it's called the ISU Scholarship. Those are stipends that are given to students once you're already on campus, you're already a student, and if you want to participate in international study abroad or an international internship, those are stipends that students can uh, win that will help them to uh, defray the cost of going abroad for those student opportunities. Uh, last but not least, we are a FAFSA registered institution. So if you have US student loans, you can bring those um, to Bocconi with you. Okay. So moving on to the dorms. Um, so we have eight dorms that are um, uh, very, close to campus. Uh, there are different kinds of uh, opportunities. Some are singles, so the rooms are some are singles, some are doubles, some are apartment style, shared bath, private bath, it runs the gamut. Uh, there's, you can see them all online, they're very different, um, but they all have a 24 hour doorman. Um, uh, they all come with a basic cleaning service, which I think is remarkable. Um, I've never heard of that at a US institution. Um, they have shared kitchens and study rooms and gyms, and they are assigned on a first come first serve basis. The application period for that opens up in May. That's something you would learn about once you're accepted. Um, and the price ranges, depending on which dorm you end up in, um, the pricing is from, I'll give it to you in US dollars. It is 730 to just about $900 a month. Um, and that is depending on which dorm you end up in. And what students do for food is they either eat in one of the cafeterias on campus or they cook in the dorm. That's actually very popular. Um, that's quite a different approach than what students would do in the US. So um, for students who like to cook, that's always comes as very good news. And then of course, there's more cafes and restaurants that you can count all around Bocconi um, that are reasonably priced student kind of budget places and then more expensive places and everything in between. And so that's what students do for food is kind of a mix of those three options. Okay, oops, sorry. Uh, so I'm just gonna wrap up here uh, just to kind of, and then I'll be able to take your questions. Um, so in, in the end, I just want to reiterate why I think Bocconi is worth checking out. Uh, if you are interested in our core areas of strength, we are a top business school in Europe uh, with strong uh, rankings in economics, finance, management, et cetera, and a very long reputation in those fields, um, as well as some emerging expertise in artificial intelligence and other things that may interest you. Um, we have a very um, technology um, is runs throughout our, our teaching methods. So it's a very integrated part of our platform. All the, everything is very up to date in terms of technology. Um, and it's a way that you can have a very interactive classroom experience with students from around the world. You're gonna benefit from a global network of 280 partner schools, of 120,000 alumni, and international employers from all around the world all of which would allow you to really develop your cross-cultural skills, your global business skills, other language skills. Um, if you are somebody who's looking for an international business career or you looking to study, uh, get a PhD in economics, both of which are very popular reasons to come to Bocconi, among other reasons, you're gonna have a jump start on your peers because you're gonna have all of this international exposure and network um, when you get out of undergrad already. So that will be set up. Uh, you're joining a very multicultural community of students and faculty, and you are um, on a very dynamic urban campus where you're getting the best of two worlds, the, the campus life and then the city life. Um, and for students, who want to be um, in a city, um, you'll find lots to like about Milan. So I'm just going to move on. I'm going to leave you 
with a couple of ways to get more information about us. Um, I can see that um, uh, Grace has put in the chat the link to our profile on the NSHSS website. So that is one step. You can take a picture of this QR code that will take you to another part of our website where you can ask for information. I'll just give you a few seconds to take a photo of that. And then I will leave you with these links. I uh, The top one is of course our main website, um, which is in English and Italian. And um, then you can see our departmental website is top. So all your general questions about the undergraduate experience at Bocconi is there. Uh, my email is next. Uh, you can learn much more about the uh, mechanism of admissions and like all of the details about diplomas and APs and, and all of the things that you need to know, very specific details. If you have a French baccalaureate uh, or uh, the IB diploma or whatever, you can learn all of it there. Um, we also offer, if you're interested in Bocconi and um, you want to come check it out for two weeks in July. Um, we have a summer program. You take a few classes, you do group work, you have projects, you have guests, you have uh, guest speakers, etc. And there's a range of really interesting classes offered that take advantage of our location in Italy. And so that's something you may want to check out as well. Uh, and then I, of course, invite you to follow us on social media. Uh, you'll find lots of interesting videos and uh, posts from our students, from our team, um, lots of ways to kind of learn more about Bacon. As I mentioned, we also have a buddy program, and you'll see on our website, you can uh, search for UniBuddy, U-N-I, Buddy, and uh, then it takes you to a page that's offered for masters and bachelors. You click on uh, bachelors, actually, I think you click on the word undergraduate, and then it takes you to a page where there's a student ambassador for each of the seven programs that I mentioned in English, and you can feel free to reach out to any of those students and ask them about their Bocconi experience um, and what they like about it, what you know, advice they might have, anything like that. That's what they're there for, and they're happy to work with you. We also just had a webinar last week um, which had seven students students, international students, who each spoke about their program area and kind of took students, prospective students, through what those programs entailed and what they learned and things that they wanted to share about that. So if that's something you'd like to check out, uh, send me an email and I can send you a link to that. Uh, I'd be very happy to do that. Um, I have to talk for a long time. I'm going to turn it over to questions. So hopefully you took a picture of this, these links. And I just want to say thank you for your attention. And uh, I'd be happy to answer your questions. And if not live, um, if there's too many questions for live, um, then feel free to send me an email uh, to that address. So I'm going to end my presentation here so I can take your questions. And thanks for your attention. OK, so let me just navigate here. Uh, do you see law as a major? So in our English programs for undergraduate, uh, that is not an option. Um, but if you speak Italian, it's a different story. So you can see that online. So should we apply in 11th grade? No, you don't have to apply in 11th grade um, unless you're somebody who knows you want to go to Bocconi. Um, what some people have done, um, especially students who are Italian, their parents are from Italy, they're living in the US, but they want to go back to Italy for college. When they're in 11th grade, they can do a very early session. Um, typically, when it's not COVID and the admissions deadlines haven't changed, uh, we have an early session where those students would apply in the late spring of 11th grade. So a student who really knows what they want and wants to be a Bocconi can apply in the late spring of 11th grade. That should be a deadline that we return to. Um, uh, but this year it was different because of the pandemic. So just keep checking our website to see how that deadline is shifting because it has moved around. But that has been possible in the past. But you are not required to apply in 11th grade. Uh, so I'm sorry if I gave you that impression. Um, okay, let me come back up here. Oh, also, could people put in the chat where they're from? I would love to see that. I would love to see what states uh, you're from, because everybody's saying hi, and I would like to hear more about where you're from. Okay, uh, just having trouble viewing the chat. Here we go. Okay. 
Um, yes, you would have to get a visa. Um, when you're accepted to Bocconi, you receive all the information you need to go to the um, embassy or the consulate closest to your home. And uh, there's a very, um, a very well-documented procedure for getting a student visa to study in Italy. Um, so that's something that's just part of your admissions information that comes. Um, okay. Thank you for the nice comments. Sorry for the trucks outside. I am in New York City. So uh, luckily we haven't had any sirens go by tonight. Um, you're, do you offer an international education degree? We do not. Uh, the areas I mentioned earlier, uh, business economics, political science, management, et cetera, that, that's where we offer our programs. Um, so there are no education uh, programs here. Um, you can take AP classes um, in any year. Uh, it, 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 so we're looking at your transcript from 10th and 11th grade. So that's where we're, we're going to register that information. But it, you know, some students take them 10th, 11th, 12th, and a mix. Um, I've been talking to a lot of students who are seniors who have been in touch with me for six months who knew they wanted to apply right away to Bocconi. And some of them have not taken all of their APs, but they will take them. They're taking them right now as seniors. And then they, um, they will um, they will just upload that information at the end of the year. Okay. Um, for American students, if we do not have economics as an extracurricular activity, how much does that affect our application? Um, it it a lot of schools don't have economics as an ec extracurricular activity so i that's where i would use so that's not going to be on your resume because you didn't have a uh, economics club or something at your school and which is perfectly normal uh some schools have it some schools don't have it um and so uh then you would just use your letter of motivation to talk about your interest in economics. Maybe there are other ways you've really nurtured that interest. Maybe you've taken um, an outside class. Maybe you've taken economics at school as a class, not an extracurricular. Maybe you've done something with an internship. Maybe you've um, found other ways to explore that interest. Um, maybe you know someone who's an economist and you uh, have learned a lot from that person outside of school. So I don't know, there's lots of ways you can gain that information. Um, okay, and it's uh, and we understand that not every school is going to offer uh, an economics club, for example. Uh, we do not offer engineering to answer that question. Um, I have a question about would it be possible if IB classes are taken instead of um, AP classes? Um, the, for schools that are IB schools that don't offer AP classes, you should write to me. There's a, a separate procedure in the admissions office for people who don't have access to AP classes. Um, one pathway that students have taken is they have self-studied for an AP exam and then just gotten a three, four, or five on their own. They don't actually take the class, they take the exam. Uh, and then other pathways are related to IB. So um, you can write to me at the email I gave you earlier. Um, again, it's trisha.brown at unibocconi.it. And also you can find links to our office on the NSHSS uh, website, and that will bring you back to me or the other, uh, my other colleagues. So um, we, I can speak to you about the specifics of that case. Um, what is the average high school GPA for an American student at Bocconi? Unfortunately, that is not data that we share uh, because there really is no average per se. And that is because we have so many different programs, um, seven programs in English. And so the GPA really fluctuates based on the different programs and how competitive those programs are. Some are harder to get into than others. Um, some are much more competitive. And so, and it really depends on the year because the class, um, who's coming in the class and who's applying that year, it changes from year to year. So we just don't offer a, a minimum GPA. Uh, somebody has asked if um, medicine is an option. Um, it is not. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the core areas, business economics, uh, et cetera. Uh, neuroscience, unfortunately, no but I share your interest in neuroscience <laughs> personally, um, but we do not have that. Okay, people are telling me where they're from, Oregon, Pennsylvania, New York, 
shout out to New York, California, Florida, Florida, New Jersey. Oh, wow, you guys are from all over. Um, Houston, New York. Okay, are there more questions? Engineering, unfortunately, no, not with Bocconi. Um, but um, I invite you to check out uh, the U European University Consortium. It's a partnership of uh, schools that we connect with uh, that are elsewhere in Europe, and some of them do offer engineering. So you can Google that university, sorry, European University Consortium, um, and, and you may find something if you're interested in being in Europe, but unfortunately no engineering at Bocconi. Um, uh, 41% of the classes are taught in English. Would that be for the first year students who do not speak Italian? Wait, I don't follow this question. 41% of the classes are taught in English. Would that be for the first year students who do not speak Italian? How do English language speakers function throughout their time at Bocconi? Ah, okay. So the 41%, it's not just for the first year. You're in an English program and that means all your classes are in English the whole three years. So you're just, you're, you're part of a cohort of students who's taking uh, all uh, English classes. At the same time, you're learning Italian. So how students function throughout their time is actually a very good question. I've talked to loads of students. Some have arrived with almost no knowledge and some have arrived uh, fluent because their parents or their grandparents were Italian. So I'm gonna concentrate on the first group. Um, what I, those students have advised to me is that number one, uh, they always advise that future students don't come with zero Italian. That before, if you get accepted to Bocconi and you don't speak it already, that in the summer before you come at least, if not before, you do a Duolingo or some online language program so that you can really get to kind of like the basics in Italian. Um, so that way you get off the plane and at least you can start somewhere. But then on top of that, when you come, we have welcome days at the beginning of the program. Uh, it's an orientation period that happens at the end of August and it's a bonding time. It's a time for you. Everybody's taking a math crash course. Everyone's taking an Italian crash course. And at the end of the crash course, um, students feel like they can at least uh, ask directions, uh, go to a restaurant and just handle the basics. And then, of course, if you are um, uh, living in a dorm and you're living with Italians and you have friends that are Italian and you're going all over Milan on the weekends um, and you're traveling around Italy on the weekends, students report to me that they're Italian and plus now you're taking the ongoing class in Italian during the school year. Students are reporting to me that their Italian goes like this. Um, so I think that's like a remarkable fringe benefit is that there are two languages required as part of the program and what's really nice about that is um, uh, I have lived abroad myself. I have lived abroad in Japan and I arrived knowing about zero words in Japanese and I can speak from firsthand experience when I say that is uh, not the easiest thing in the world. It is better to have like at least 10, 15 words <laughs> when you get off the plane and then take a language class right away because it really enhances your whole experience and you can get by in Italy on the on the Bocconi campus uh, without being a great speaker of Italian, but all of your relationships and all of your cultural interactions and all of your travels will be enhanced tenfold if you speak Italian. That is my uh, personal recommendation to you about that. Um, what if you're in an IB program, they only have one AP starting in 11th grade. Okay, so again, IB students, please write to me and I can follow up with you about very specific IB things. Uh, thank you, Indiana, for your nice comment. Thank you, Hawaii, for your nice comment. Alabama, Virginia, oh my goodness, you guys are from all over, that's cool. Do we have competitive cheer as a sport and advanced girls basketball as a sport? Um, I don't think so for cheer. And I am not sure about advanced girls basketball, but I invite you to go to the Bocconi website. Uh, there's 80 clubs, and I apologize that I do not have all 80 memorized, um, but I invite you to go to the Bocconi website, and you don't search for club, you search, search for student associations, and you will get the list, and you will see. Uh, we have Nigeria in the house, welcome. Oh, English language certificate. Okay, sorry, I don't think I even said that. I apologize. Um, so if you go to a high school that is taught in English, then you automatically have English certification. If you go to a high school that is not taught in English, you need to pass a certification exam. Uh, it was on one of the slides. I, I did not 
give it a shout out, unfortunately, I'm sorry, but you can find it on our website um, under the admissions pages and you would get to um, admissions criteria and then it would kind of, you would drill down from there. Um, you can see all the standard English certification, TOEFL, et cetera, and it'll give you our minimum scores for that. Um, Yes, we offer computer science. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. And um, you can uh, check out the artificial intelligence program. And we also have um, another program um, in computer science as well. So that is, and the thing that about that program that I think is really attractive is that it's an integrated program um, with um, uh, economics, management, and computer science. So you're really getting all three. Um, so look into that for the world bachelor in business, uh, three AP still required. Yeah. The, because that is a rule of the Italian ministry of education. Um, so that is, uh, that's something that we have to comply with. Um, okay. I have time for probably a few more questions. Uh, will English speakers master Italian by the time they graduate? That depends on the English speaker. Um, so some people, you know, are better languages than others, but I, my personal experience I, uh, from living abroad is that it would be pretty tough to live in a foreign language country for three years and take the language of that of that country as a class and practice it every day in all your interactions and socialize with people in that language and not get amazing at that language. That's my personal view. That seems to be uh, true in the students, the American students that I've talked to from Bocconi, but uh, there's no guarantee in life that everybody becomes fluent in three years. But um, I, I can't imagine a scenario where you wouldn't be a very, very strong Italian speaker. So. Um, if you don't get accepted for the fall session, can you reapply for the winter session? Absolutely, yes. And the nice thing about that is you don't, um, there's no stigma. You just reapply. Maybe you take your SATs again and your score is higher. Maybe you write a better letter of motivation, personal statement, and the combination of the two kind of boosts your application. Um, so, or maybe you, the second time around, you add a fourth choice or a third choice and you say, I'd be happy in any of these areas. So that's another good thing to know. Um, but yes, you can apply again. Um, vet tech. No, we do not offer vet tech. Are there any programs that prospective applicants can apply to, to boost their application? You mean Bocconi pro? I'm not really sure what you mean, but I I'm not sure what you mean, but um, there are no specific uh, application boosting classes like any kind of like uh, guaranteed in or anything like that. We look at the four main components, the GPA, the standardized test, the, um, the resume, and the letter of motivation. Um, so what is contained in those four elements um, is really capturing everything that you bring to the table. Um, so uh, that is... That's the way that goes. The school year um, is the same as in the US. It starts in the fall, ends in the spring, uh, although the exams go a little bit later uh, through May and June. Uh, I know a lot of American colleges are ending earlier than us, but um, we also have longer, uh, a longer gap. Uh, is uh, sign language offered? I do not believe so. That is the first time I've heard that question. That is a great question. I'm going to find out. I do not believe so. I invite you to email me and I will have the answer uh, by tomorrow. Um, but I, I haven't seen that. Um, uh, is there soccer? Yes, there's soccer. In fact, I was just on a Zoom this morning with a student from Latin America and he was all about the soccer club. Um, so that was very important to him. He was not applying unless there was soccer. Um, my email, once again, um, is uh, T-R-I-C-I-A, Trisha, dot brown, brown spelled like the color. So T-R-I-C-I-A dot B-R-O-W-N at unibocconi.it. Actually, I can put it in the chat. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Um, Okay, I'm taking the last question for tonight because I have another presentation. I am actually supposed to be doing it at eight o'clock and now it's 8.01. Um, so are is there a health are there healthcare classes? Um, 
we're we're not focused on healthcare, but you can find some uh, public health related classes. You will find a list of our uh, all of our electives. Um, you can find that on our website and see exactly what we offer. So everyone, I'm going to say good night. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your great questions. I appreciate your attention, and um, uh, thank you, uh, Grace and. I'm signing off, so thank you, bye-bye.